On March 18, Joe Wiesenthal of Bloomberg Markets had MMT economist Stephanie Kelton on the show. If you're not familiar with MMT, they think governments should print more money because deficits aren't a big deal. At one point in the show, Wiesenthal asked, if we don't need to worry about deficits, why do we have taxes? Kelton's response was illuminating. Now, the traditional excuse for taxes is, paraphrasing Oliver Wendell Holmes, that they are the price of civilization. Skeptics point out that historically societies with very low taxes were often far more civilized. Think the Dutch Golden Age, Islamic Golden Age, Victorian England, the pejoratively named Gilded Age in American history, that 30-year Golden Age when almost everything useful was invented. And yet throughout that latter period federal receipts were one-fifth what they are today. Why so much civilization? Because much of what governments do today was done by charities or businesses competing for customer dollars instead of seizing their budgets in taxes. When doctors, firefighters, and schools have to satisfy customers, things get quite civilized. Still, even if we accept a night watchman state argument for, say, national defense or salaries for Supreme Court justices, it gets tricky if government can simply print up the fresh money to pay for all that civilization. Kelton's answer? Taxes would still be needed, because they make us poor. And because they can punish people she doesn't like. Specifically, Kelton likes that taxes, remove dollars from our hands, so we can't spend them, leaving more purchasing power for the government. So taxes make the people poor, and that's a selling point to her, presumably because she thinks governments are really good at lifting people out of poverty. Anybody who's spent time in America's inner cities, where government money is pretty much the only money, might disagree. Ah, but it's not just about spending our money more wisely than we ever could. Kelton adds two secondary reasons she loves taxes. To punish particular people by redistributing their money, and to punish people for doing things she doesn't like. Such as failing to buy energy-efficient appliances, no, really. In other words, social engineering with carrots for your friends, sticks for your not-so-friends. I should add that libertarians completely agree with Kelton here, Taxes are indeed for spreading poverty and for punishing people you don't like. That's why libertarians, being kind and generous, oppose taxes. Meanwhile, it's nice to know we all agree that taxes have nothing to do with civilization. They are for destroying with a side of discriminatory punishment. Over the years, the United States has abandoned its constitutional monetary system and replaced it with a fiat system effectively run by the Federal Reserve. Passage of H.R. 2284 would take a small step toward returning to the constitutional system and could subtly undermine the Fed's monopoly on money. The United States Constitution states in Article 1, Section 10, no state shall make anything but gold and silver coin a tender in payment of debts. Currently, all debts and taxes are either paid with Federal Reserve notes, dollars, which were authorized as legal tender by Congress, or with coins issued by the U.S. Treasury very few of which have gold or silver in them. The Federal Reserve destroys the constitutional monetary system by creating a monopoly based on its fiat currency. Without the backing of gold or silver, the central bank can easily create money out of thin air. This not only devalues your purchasing power over time, it also allows the federal government to borrow and spend far beyond what would be possible in a sound money system. Without the Fed, the U.S. government wouldn't be able to maintain all of its unconstitutional wars and programs. Taxes on gold and silver erect barriers to using gold and silver as money by raising transaction costs. By exempting gold and silver bullion from capital gains taxes, H.R. 2284 would not only eliminate a barrier to investing in gold and silver, it would also make it more practical to use gold and silver in everyday transactions, a foundational step for people to undermine the Federal Reserve's monopoly on money by introducing competition into the monetary system. Constitutional tender expert Professor William Green said when people in multiple states actually start using gold and silver instead of Federal Reserve notes, it would effectively nullify the Federal Reserve and end the federal government's monopoly on money. Over time, as residents of the state use both Federal Reserve notes and silver and gold coins, the fact that the coins hold their value more than Federal Reserve notes do will lead to a reverse Gresham's Law effect, where good money, gold and silver coins, will drive out bad money, Federal Reserve notes. As this happens, a cascade of events can begin to occur, including the flow of real wealth toward the state's treasury, an influx of banking business from outside of the state, 
As people in other states carry out their desire to bank with sound money, and an eventual outcry against the use of Federal Reserve notes for any transactions. This was the Nomad Economist. Please like, share, leave me a comment, subscribe, and please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.